No. Hi guys, welcome back to the stream. It's a Darmar. Today we have one more Serbian here, which is amazing with his concept art. His name is Milan Nikolic and he does one of the best art I ever saw, to be honest. He was one of the first Serbians, by the way, that I saw online and I was like, man, I want to do this. He inspired me a lot. Later I met him and he became my friend and today he's with us on the stream. Hi Milan. Hey everyone and thanks for having me, Darko. Oh, every, anytime, man. I've been chasing you for the last two months to join, man. I'm so yeah, excited. I couldn't avoid anymore. Yeah, there is no possibility of avoiding Dharma. <laughs> yeah, it's hard because you're living kind of half a kilometer from, from our studio. So, yeah, it was yeah. hard. You were stalking me a lot. I, I was, to be honest, I, I was. I couldn't even take a break outside without seeing you and be like, hey, are we going to have stream? Oh, yeah, Jesus. I'm joking. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad that I'm here and thanks for mentioning that first thing. I'm glad that I inspired someone at least. I think you inspire a lot of people to be honest because your work is uh, outstanding and I remember when I saw your work for the first time, I was like, this guy can paint, this guy can design and it's all so authentic that I, my, 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 my mind was blown because I came from a car design, this was something totally new, fresh, authentic. So what I want to first ask you is, how did you develop your style? How did that happen? Well, I, I don't know. Probably um, I, look, I look at a lot of artists and probably practicing and studying them. Uh, how It's kind of hard to say how I study because usually I probably miss that foundation thing when you when you have to study like anatomy and everything. I mean, I, I have done that on university, but not that much as, as I should. And uh, I was just exploring something that I actually really, really liked. That, that could be some part of the armor or something. And I was like, just painting and drawing a lot of like, pretty much abstract shapes. And eventually it led to where it is right now. It's kind of hard to say, like I practiced that and that. So that's how I got there. Yeah, I know. I know that we talked recently and you showed me that you have sketchbooks now that you returned a little bit to traditional art. Uh, why, why, why is that happening? I would like you to explain because I think that it's a very smart move from your side. Well, actually, I'm not using sketchbook that much, but uh, I kind of get back into more drawing, just like line art. But not, not, not like line art with a lot of like, you know, opacity and like a lot of lines. But I'm really trying to nail stuff at once because that's the part that I missed when I was starting. Because when I was starting, I was practicing mostly painting because I came here from kind of graphic design background. I have a graphic design background actually. And then I just jump into painting more than to actually drawing. And uh, I really miss that that kind of foundation of, uh, of drawing. Yeah. And the more I'm working, I see how, how actually important it is for, for explaining very roughly uh, your idea. And it's really like, I, I, I can't, stress out how, how important that is actually right now. Because I mean, I'm using 3D painting. I know how to figure out the problem very quickly. But if you know to draw very well, you can really nicely explain what you actually want. Because uh, we're kind of now working on a more, let's say if you're kind of more professional, you, you, become, you start to work more kind of um, complex, on more complex design. And you have to, you can just draw like rough sketch for let's say illustration or whatever. And this is like composition and whatnot. And that's it. You kind of have to really explain with the, with the line, like what you actually want to do. And then if the work is approved, then you can jump into 3d and just like start like developing and kind of molding that. So, so, so yeah. that's why, that's why I want to, I want to prove line. And I think it's really important, at least for me and for what I do. Yeah, your lines and the sketches are out of this world, man. And that's that's what I like about them. I'm showing them now on the screen. I'm showing you, but now I'm showing the, the lines. And they are they are out of this world, man. They are they are very, very unique design. And I'm always fascinated when I see your designs. Thanks. Well, I just it's kinda I never nailed down design at first. I mean it, it can happen from time to time, like happy accident, but <laughs> I really I don't do iteration that much, which is kinda bad. Like iteration, I mean like comparing one art with, with the other, like copying and doing iteration. So yeah. mostly I'm just stay on that shoulder and do a uh, hundred designs maybe on it. But people people only see like that final one, like, oh, he nailed it at first. No, I didn't. I was just like, just changing, changing and very fast. Cause I think it's really important to, to put the energy into design 
And that means not spending a lot of time in trying to develop the shape. You can trace that later on. I mean, even if, even in 3D and, and especially in drawing, just like try to fast to nail down the, the shape. And if you like it at first, I mean, I know how to stop when I kind of feel something and when, when my eyes love what I see and uh, then I know like, all right, that's cool design. Yeah, I, I guess it's cool design. I mean, nobody approved like it's cool design, but yeah, I, I approve. Cool I approve. Thanks, I man. I approve because it's really good. And what, what I wanted to talk with you about is that you're now using 3D. And uh, I saw a lot of work that you did and it's amazing also. How, how, does, how does that 2D translate to your 3D? How, how would you that explain? <laughs> Well, I think I'm using the same techniques. It's just different softwares and different approach. But like mindset is the same. Like the way you develop shape and the way you look at the shape is the same. So it's more about taste than uh, tricks. Uh, but what's different, like I love 2D, but I kind of love 3D more because it's, I mean, it depends on what you're doing. If you just want some inspirational art, then definitely just do 2D. But if you want actually that, are to be somewhere like as we did animation for it it's really important to jump into 3d and really see from every angle how that looks like because it's not in 2d you can just like kind of hide all the mistakes and it looks good only from that angle but if you try to translate that in 3d then you realize there's a ton of mistakes and it it will look awful when it's like actually in animation and when the camera is rotating around the object so that's why 3d is really important to to just like uh to have that feel of the actual character and which is also tricky if you do 3d and then you grab a screen and you want to present that as a work it's also awful because it don't look good only from that angle because uh, the whole character is supposed to be is supposed to look good and uh, as i said depends on what's what's the purpose of, of that character so uh, but pretty much i'm i'm using the same mindset designing 2d 3d painting whatever Speaking about mindset, and I like how you're explaining everything. I, I can understand that you're everything you're explaining, and I think that people are gonna be very happy to hear this on stream, because there are a lot of people that look up to you and your work. And what I wanted to know, you have a Learn Squared course, right? Creature design. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Learn Square is up and running. I'm supposed to have a, a course open again, so. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I'm I'm mostly talking about design, exploring. Like, it's mostly creature. Uh, it's actually creature, but techniques. Pretty much, I'm talking about 3D code, ZBrush. I mean, as you can see from the trailer, so it's cool. It's cool. It's actually cool to see how people uh, start and how they end up uh, after after the course. How they, how we. I mean, it was same to me when I when I get to some when I get some tutorial or or learning for someone. It's kind of cool because you don't have to go through that process alone because it will take it will take years to do that. And somebody just explain you like everything like here we go. Learn that. Avoid that steps. Avoid that step. This is what you need to know. These tools you have to use and that's it. So that's pretty much in that tutorial. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on out there. But for someone who really want to learn that technique that I'm using in 3D and uh, like mindset behind creature design and like shape language pretty much. I mean, it's pretty, pretty much cool. I see, and I would like to hear more about that course because I know that many people are interested in that. Can you explain us a little bit, what are the lessons, where do we go a little bit more? Because I think they would like to know, what do you explain from the lesson to lesson? Well, it's, it's pretty much starting like with, uh, with what was the course about, what's the uh, purpose of the course and what you're going to learn through the course. And then we're talking about like brief creation, um, what what are the stuff and the reference getting of course like what what is really important before you start to create anything any character especially if you're working on your personal stuff your ip maybe and there's also like a little bit more like how which approach to you what approach to use if you want to do client work because you know client work is different it really depends like from client to client but um, overall there are some let's say rules that you have to follow and then and then I jump into 3D code. I'm showing you like just really basic tools, like what I actually use, because I really simplified all the tools as ZBrush and 3D code, like literally using just stuff that I need. So I'm pretty much not that badass into into all that software, like technically. And uh, I kind of simplified all that, ZBrush especially. But that's more than enough that you need for consulting. You really don't have to overthink and learn a ton of different tools, because it would just, you you just start to overthink because I mean it 
those programs really powerful. So yeah. if, you, if, you, if you try to learn everything, you're never going to create anything because there's a lot. And, uh, and pretty much we, we can cover the basics like 3D code and ZBrush. And uh, there are some sketches like how do I get a reference and think about like the brief that I made previously. And then I just start to do very rough sculpt in 3D code. And I'm explaining why I'm doing that there. And then we transfer that into into Zebra. Actually, I'm transferring that into Zebra, <laughs> and and um, I, I think like you're a student, so I'm we, you know, um, yeah. I'm joking. And um, and yeah, pretty much that's it. Then I'm like finishing up the design in Zebra. We're covering like posing and everything, uh, how to take care of your model, what's what are really important to to think of when you're designing character, and then um, then it's about our painting in. In Photoshop, like fixing all the all the small mistakes that that it will take time to finish in ZBrush, and it's easier to do that in uh, in uh, in Photoshop because some stuff really it's really not smart to to do in 3D, and some stuff are not smart to do in 2D. So you kind of find a perfect balance between 2D and 3D and how to make stuff work perfectly. And so that's yeah, you're showing that one like uh, MF. CI work yeah. like that dude with a it's, it's brilliant I love it that's like that's pretty much what I'm doing in uh, in tutorial so I'm kind of blocking in nail down the basic design and then just pose that and over paint it in uh, in Photoshop and making scene and everything so it's yeah. pretty much cool I mean it's fast it's really fast I love if this you know, work of yours I really love thanks, it thanks man These designs are brilliant look at the lines guys I sorry for interrupting but look at the lines how he goes from the the heavy line to the thin line. I, I love it. I love oh, it. Oh, that that's all happy accidents. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's all happy accidents, guys. Milan, no. Milan was born under the lucky star and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all Me, hard work. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is just. I mean, it's uh, it's not talent. I wouldn't say it's talent or stuff because people looking. Oh, you have a talent for design. No, I don't. I just I just love those stuff. And I believe if you love something, you just put uh, a lot of effort into it and energy and you sacrifice a lot of other stuff because you love that. And yeah. that's how, how you actually improve yourself because of hard work. And uh, you develop some kind of taste because you tried a ton of different stuff. I, I have made a ton of mistakes before I came to that level that I can design something like that. I mean, it was years of just having no idea what I'm doing. Actually, it was pretty much abstract and that doesn't make sense, but over time, you kind of learn what not to do, and you have to you have to really study other 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 artists and uh, in general like nature and everything whatever, whatever inspires you. But not like study is is like copying that. Just like watching that is study. Just like thinking, ah, oh, so that's how it works. So you see how that wraps around. How oh, why? Oh, okay, that's supposed to be functional. Why? What is the purpose of that? Blah blah, blah and stuff like that. So that's actually studying, like thinking every time about something and watching movies. And I'm watching. I remember watching Game of Thrones with my brother. And something, something was going on. He was like, "You didn't get, you didn't catch up what's going on, right? You, you are not watching this." And I was like, "Did you sell what he's wearing?" And he was like, "What?" And I was like, "Just, just like, said like a ton of stuff, like what he had on on his armor and stuff." He was like, uh, "All right, whatever, let's watch it." Because <laughs> yeah. that's stuff that I'm taking care of, and that's really, really what what's my interest. So I kind of, I can multitask. So I'm focusing on one, one, one certain thing at the moment. Mm, I see. And uh, you said that you don't have a talent, which I must say I don't agree. But I would say that you have a huge talent, which you upgraded by working really hard. For me, at least how I see it, and I would like to hear how you see it, is that you took the talent, your observation, and then you put it all with the hard work in one box. And then with uh, other professions, and graphic design, I don't know, watching movies, playing games, and we all take that as a big mess, put it in the bag, spin it, and that's how we get designed. That, that's, that's how I see it. That's true. That's actually how it's happened. Yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody has the same story. It's not like something mysterious, something super mysterious. You know? Like everybody, if you ask, you know, yourself or anyone that you know who is like doing design and everything, that's it, pretty much it. Like. Um, like a mixture of all those stuff like put together into as you said like one box and like something will come out now that really depends on your personal taste and like your character or who knows what how that gonna end up so that's the only difference how we are different like how each of us is like a unique artist Let's i see like that. i see and you said you're using 3d code and you're using zbrush yeah uh, what i want to know is why are you using those two softwares and not only one 
<clears throat> well, 3D code is super easy for hard surface. So I'm mostly using 3D code for hard surface and for maybe very, very quick, <clears throat> sorry, for very quick uh, rough sketch, let's say 3D sketch of a creature, if I really had to push the boundaries of, of let's say, <clears throat> grounded and standard things. So I love to do that in 3D code because you have like sphere tool and you can just like pull that in 3D space, same as you can do like with VR now in medium and it's pretty fast. I mean, zippers now have some new tool, but it's not good as a 3D code. It's super rough, it's ugly, but it's good for me just to to know what, I, what I'm looking for. And once I catch up something that I want to, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just putting that in ZBrush because I really love how ZBrush works and how the brushes work. And it just, uh, it has a really nice feel. You feel it feels like you're really actually clean. And uh, I, I just, I fucking love ZBrush, man. <laughs> hey, Pixelogic, how are you? <laughs> I'm joking. Take, but no, really. Take Milan, take Milan, sponsor yeah, him. I suggest, strongly yeah, suggest. Dude, I'm not, I'm not that good. They're like badass artists in ZBrush. I'm yeah. just using it how much I needed to to do what I love and what I need for a job. So that's it. I'm not going crazy with like technical stuff and super polished stuff. It's pretty much if you zoom whatever I'm doing, it's it's pretty much rough because I, I have 2D pretty much cool 3D, 3D skill that I can easily overpaint something and make it look good because uh, I learned how to do that, right? And uh, that's why I don't have to go super crazy with hyper real uh, ZBrush and especially in this world because you have to produce a couple of concepts during the day so you really don't have time to like spend the whole day just designing one head. I mean I wish that's maybe a case in the studio but when you freelance and do you have to do a ton of stuff during the day so it's it's pretty much stressful. Yeah the, the industry is super fast I mean when you yeah. speak about it it's it's crazy crazy how it many is. concepts you need to do per day. It is and it's going even crazier nowadays. Yeah. How, how are we going to achieve that? That's my question. You think that something's going to change in the industry or how you perceive that? Well, I have no idea. I mean, I see that will be like a natural selection in the future. So at some point will be maybe art directors or something like that depends or super old seniors, whatever. And you won't be forced and uh, you won't have that huge pressure as you have now when you have to kind of to prove yourself to industry that you're good and to nail down all the good projects to work on. So, and the younger generation will be at a position where we're right now. So they will just have to work super hard every day. So, I mean, everything has on his own space and uh, in, uni in universe, so no worries, man. Yeah, there, there is always there is always place for everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, at least we hope. I hope, so. I hope, yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, I would like you to ask you one question that guys posted. It's by yeah. Milos. Hi, Milos. And he's asking, where do you find inspiration for drawing these creatures? Oh, I'm usually using Dharmar photos as references. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's, why, that's why they are so sexy. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're so fucking unique. Uh, I'm joking. I really, love, I really love bones, I guess, insects, insects. Mm. I really love insects. I mean, because that's little aliens in our planet. We just well, we just don't care about them that much. But if you really want to explore like insects and just uh, all that little kind of animals, I don't know how to call them, they're beautiful. They have a lot of cool elements, which is designed by nature. And if you really know how to redesign stuff, you can take out a lot of a uh, lot from from it. So, but you know, when you when you work in job, you need to kind of, you need to bring in clothes and hard surface and to build a character. But if you kind of try to, if you have a good visual library, which means like learning how to do hard surface, learn how to draw insects, mostly kind of studying them. And uh, if you combine that, you can get something really unique. Because what I see nowadays, like people are kind of copying each other and everything starts to look the same. Because there's, I saw that a million of times and I'm getting bored of it. And trust me, I have a ton of work that I never showed because I'm not satisfied how that looked like. And people around me was like, you're crazy, you should put it out. And I was like, oh, no, it's not, it's not unique. And I think it's not, why should I put something that you saw before? It's, mm. I mean, I, it's not like I'm doing very unique stuff, but I'm really at least trying to, every time in my new work, bring something new, at least some element that will be fresh 
for me. So if I'm not satisfied, that's it. So pretty much insects, nature, I don't know. I love tech, tech probably. I mean, you can see I'm bringing a lot of like hard surface elements here and there yeah. that can be leg, arms, shoulders, some chest piece design, something on the head, whatever. And generally, I like to combine everything together. And that's really cool. If you know, it can be a mess if you don't know how to combine an organic and hard surface and a lot of different materials. It can be a complete mess. But at the same time, if you know where, how to put that, it can really, really be cool. Yeah. I know, uh, also, I'm looking at your work now, and this is the, I don't know how I missed this, but the name is of the work is Panez Namsad, and I'm like, <laughs> what the hell did I just see? For well, that? that's actually what I, my thoughts when I was designing, <laughs> like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, the literal translation, guys, is, I don't know what it is now, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you, if you go around, you can see a lot of fun names out there. See, I have one work, one creature, and it's called Jackie which is kind of a universal <laughs> dog name in Serbia, right? Yeah. So it's kind of, I was like, oh, Jesus, like, you should, you know, you should bring a story into this character. Dude, Jackie, I'm done. Yeah, Jackie. That's it. Jackie it wasn't. Stray dog, stray dog like, of the streets that was of, of Serbia. Just, <laughs> yeah, man, that was just for practicing. So it wasn't like I had a brief, I have a world, I have, no, it was just I'm practicing and it turned out, looks cool. So I was like, all right, I can publish this, it's fun. And uh, how should I call it? Uh, the dog from the planet 334. No, it's Jackie. Because it is Jackie, actually. It is Jackie. My vision of Jackie. Yeah, I like when we blend a little bit of Serbian with the, 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 with the world. We present them a little bit, you know, that's always a nice touch. Yeah, maybe. It can be a nice touch. <laughs> not always. Not always. <laughs> uh, I know that uh, you opened the studio and I congr congratulations on that. You opened it uh, recently with uh, Hunter Schultz and... Uh, yeah. Your co-founder, also you have an employee, Urosh Ljivic, also, <laughs> also known as Plum, which is watching us now. Hi, Urosh. And uh, congrats, guys, on opening the first ever concept design, uh, concept art studio in, in Serbia. Yeah, first, first we're going to fail. No worries. <laughs> we're going to be the first. You're not going to fail. I, I, I don't, I, I'm sure you're not going to fail. Maybe it's going to be hard because it's something new here. But Master, Master is looking really good i love your logo i love the designs that you're putting out so thanks man i mean we're happen with that Ooh, it's gonna happen a lot actually let's 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 come from the beginning so one night hunter and i hunter is my friend he's from florida but he worked here for, for nordius company and we we kind of met we actually met on ifcc and we kind of kind of start to appreciate each other and we, yeah. we start to hang around and like go for a beer and stuff you when met I, him on IFCC, sorry. You yeah, we, were, we actually didn't know each other. Oh Not, I don't even know his work. He didn't know my words. And we was like super drunk. And he was like, dude, I know you. And I was like, yeah, I know you too. And it was like, ah, whatever. <laughs> and then he came here. He was like, you want to go for a beer? And I I get out. We, we had a beer. And we went for some... There was some uh, band playing Repetitor. I really yeah. love that band. And we ended up in Mosh Pit and stuff. Christina, Christina is also my very, very good friend, and she she were with, with us out there. It was crazy night. And then that's we then we realized, oh, we are friends now, all right. Yeah, and friends. we were yeah, so drunk one night, and we're like, what? Are we gonna do this? Because we were talking previous, like it would be good to start something like something very, something different. Because there are certain stuff that we love in this industry, and there's a lot of stuff that we actually don't. And we were like, how we can change stuff and blah blah blah. You know, those inspirational speech, like when you're drunk, oh, we're going to own the universe. <laughs> but actually it happened and we co-founded the Mastra and Udo jump in. He's, he's not employee, he's more like uh, part of the Mastra. He, no, 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 he's, he, <laughs> he, he, he's maybe not co-founder, but he's co-founder in my heart. So, uh, uh, Udo, she's really, ah, oh, Plum, you owe me a beer for this. <laughs> Plum is going to pay a couple of drinks yeah, yeah. for and, promotion. Uh, and we're pretty much doing a lot of stuff going, I mean, and a lot of stuff will happen in the future. Just, I can't talk about all that, but yeah, but there's a lot of going on now. It's different. It's different when you're just freelancing and when you have a studio and there's a lot of stuff going on. So yeah, we'll see what's going to happen. Hopefully in, in future we'll catch up again and we'll see. Yeah, maybe, I, maybe, maybe we're just gonna fail. You never know. But you have to try. Definitely. Shut up! Stop yeah. saying you're gonna fail. You're not gonna fail, guys. You're amazing concept artists. All of you, Urosh, uh, Hunter, and you. You are really great, and all have 
unique style which I really like and you you can see in last year that you are upgrading each other which is really good and I'm sure that Master is gonna do good. I'm sure, absolutely sure. I'm not even thinking about it. I mean, the cool thing is we're we're learning from each other like constantly. Like, uh, you know, when you're all alone and freelancing, it's kind of because we have that problem in Serbia that we can't work for in house like on some AAA here because there's yeah. no like. I mean, here's Ubisoft now, but they don't have like concept art, I think. Hmm. And uh, they have concept art, but yeah. All right, never mind. So the thing is, uh, you can't. You can't learn to stop from anyone else. I mean, you watch tutorials, you're talking with friends online, but it's different. It's different when someone is in the same sharing room with you, and you can um, you can help each other. And when you're looking at something, and somebody just come behind you, be like, "Hey, dude, you see that and that?" You're like, "Oh, Jesus, thank you," because yeah. that that can really like just if you if you take one percentage of that critique. Uh, it can lead you to something completely different, which uh, and that's something that I really appreciate. And we we we're really honest. We we were not like, oh, that is cool, amazing, and that's it. No, we were like, dude, that sucks. You have to fix that right away. It's, I mean, you can't you can't send that. Like, really? No, really. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, uh, and we're helping each other with our pain and stuff like that. We also work from home, so when we work on some like personal client stuff, NDA stuff, we usually work from home and stuff like that. So we kind of don't want to like you know because of the contracts and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, we're handling this pretty much pretty good so far. We'll see. Yeah, I like the master logo, which I'm going to open now. It's it's really cool. And... We were, we were actually doing a redesign because there's some stuff that has to be fixed. It was pretty fast finished logo because we needed it uh, yeah. for something. And now hopefully we'll have something new to show like animation of that. We also have like 3D because that's baby alien and expect mm. something weird. It will be soon. Oh, yeah. nice. I can't wait to see. But speaking about fast, man, every time I see your fast sketches, initial ones, they're like, I don't know. They're, oh, yeah. they're, they're the best, the best, some of the best things I see on the internet. I, I don't know. I, I, you don't know this. I never told you, but I'm going to say it on stream. I opened this image 100 times to see this. Really? 100 times I saw this. I love it, man. Look at the balance between colors, values, and everything. It's insane. Those sketches are actually like all done in like 20 minutes. Yeah, from your soul, I mean, man. they're messy, they're messy and everything. Now, if you take any of that and try to fix it, you have to spend the whole day. But it's just like super fast. That's what I'm talking like. Just super fast, throw it away. I learned that from Anthony Jones. He was my mentor and mm. uh, pretty much he's the reason why I'm here now because he was so helpful when I was starting. I went to his mentorship and stuff. So I learned a ton from him and uh, yeah, I learned everything what I need. So... I can I can implement that in my work workflow now. So it's really important to to accept critiques because you can you can really push yourself that way. And yeah, thanks for this. I didn't know nobody told me like this this work is good. Like oh what this oh, I love it. Down I love there. I love it. I love these sketches, man. I love them. Look at this. It's I, I because I'm a designer and when I see these rough sketches, they give me give me perception of a character of person and how he's thinking, and that's what I love. Yo, dude, those, those are robots. They don't think. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, speaking about uh, ment uh, mentoring, Anthony Jones, uh, Jones is, he's an amazing artist. I love his work. A very unique style also. And I can see a little bit what you evolved in your direction. Uh, yeah, the, the, the problem, speaking about Serbia, let's touch that subject. The problem oh, no. with Serbia is, for me, that we have many high-end artists but somehow we still we talked already about this we need somehow to blend it all and for future generations they need to learn from someone you know so do you have any idea how we gonna how we can tackle that because i know other countries are also struggling with that usa is not because they have everything developed in the, in in the future and everything but how do you think we can cope with that uh, so what's actually your question, I'm sure. My actually question is how do we present ourselves to the world that Serbia has a strong society of designers? I think that will happen by nature. Like uh, we just have to do what we're doing now. And uh, I mean, now all the companies are pretty much outsourcing, even they they don't like to say that, but yeah, they're doing that because you know why. And because uh, there's a plenty of good artists and they're not... They don't have to employ someone in house, and they're actually not that good. So it's easy to easier to go just on our station, find the the artist. Depends on what kind of 
what type of projects are you working on and you just pick that artist if, if he has the style that you need or, or design language that you need. So at some point they won't look at the name and uh, it, I think it's also not important who you are, where you're from, what's your color skin or do you have arms or not. It really doesn't matter. What matters is like your art because this is at the end of the day just the industry and the job. So I think we, we, we're pretty much at a good position right now since we we weren't on the map at all. Yeah. Like, and now stuff are happening in here. I mean, we're having Ubisoft now, which is kind of huge. I mean, people listening in US, this, they were like, oh, what they're talking about? <laughs> but yeah, that that's like our struggle pretty much. And uh, I mean, we have other companies, but we were talking about like AAA, the stuff that we actually like. They're cool. They're very good, like mobile companies like uh, Nordius, Madhead, I think Apex. Apex, yeah. Well, I almost said Apex. No, yeah. no Apex. No, <laughs> don't play Apex. Don't play draw. Design, draw, design don't, yeah. don't, don't progress. It's a bad game, guys. It's a bad. Game. Yeah, <laughs> full of cheaters, and uh, and uh, and yeah, that was our struggle. Now stuff are, are pretty much good because you can see like all the people who had a huge potential in here. Now they have like tutorials available and. Uh, a lot of mentorship and we're pretty much helping each other like uh sharing uh like recommending each other to to our clients and stuff like that so i think i think it's gonna be cool maybe not yet but maybe in five years everything will be cool we are heading in a good direction the hardware is gonna pay off yeah dude that that's why we started mastering here because we were like well nobody want to try it all right let's do it Smart. somebody has to Somebody has to. When you do it, someone's gonna follow when they see it. Everybody's gonna say you're insane, but eventually they will all follow if it's good. Well, hopefully. I wish that there's like, there are more like uh, Consular Studios in here so we can help each other. And I believe that will happen in the future and that's how we're gonna grow. Uh, what is really important is we kind of appreciate each other. We are like from time to time having that famous drink and draw. I don't know. I, I have to tell Hunter to change that. It's not drink and draw. It's drink and drink because nobody's drawing there. We're all just super drunk, like having Absolutely. fun. So it's pretty much party every time. It's not like people. That I, I see a lot of we have a group on Facebook and nobody's coming because they're like afraid. They think they have to draw. No, guys, you don't have to draw. You just have to drink. Yeah, everybody so, is like afraid of what they will have to draw and everything. And I'm like, we are like, nobody's drawing, guys. <laughs> nobody's drawing. It's and like, uh, the good thing is, yeah, that we're helping each other. We know we know each other. We appreciate each other's work. And I mean, so far there are a couple of guys that maybe are, you know, not that kind of. I don't know. I won't. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, whatever. I just keep. Uh, okay. Anyways, we're we're helping each other so far. So if 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 it's gonna stay like that, we're we're on the right path. I I agree that we are. Uh, what I like. And this is a little bit of promotion for Serbia since we are both Serbians. I like that we are growing a strong community. So if anybody of Serbian guys is listening to this, we are starting to grow a really strong community. We are hanging out with each other quite often, to be honest. And yeah. it's really good because I know that other artists, uh, foreign ones, don't even hang out that much. We go for drinks, we go for food, we go for talks. And there is really like 15 of us that hang out all the time. So guys... We have drink and draw if you never heard about it. It happens from time to time in Belgrade. It's in Zagreb, in Cetinska. And if you ever want to come, you can send me the message because Milan unfortunately raised his social media a little bit so he can relax. But if you want to join, you can always send me a message and ask me and I will send you the link for everything. Everybody is always invited to join us and drink, not to draw. <laughs> True that. Uh, I'm showing uh, ICC main titles. And uh, I think that this was one of the best things I saw in that year. And uh, you worked on this with Sava Živković. Hi, Sava, if you are here, if you are watching. Uh, Sava Živković, we will bring him in some of the new streams. And man, this was so refreshing to see. When I saw it, I was like, such a cool idea and such a high-end execution. I would like to hear how, that, how did that happen? Well, ask Sava. He was, he sacrificed his life for this one. <laughs> yeah, you <are. laughs> uh, So actually, how 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 start how everything started? Uh, it happened that uh, I started working with Whale Shark Studio. It was a uh, freelance studio, pretty much. And then I met uh, Sava and Yej there. And Yej is our friend, and he's composer. 
he's badass musician. He's weird, but that's why he's good. And uh, love you, Yash. <laughs> and I really love that guy. I, I just, every time I think of him, I was like, Jesus, Yash. And uh, he's, sorry, his artist name is Is Femira. Yeah. It's really important thing, so yeah. You can and, also know uh, him as Is. <laughs> is, yeah. yeah. And uh, actually, Sal Sa was uh, back in the days working on 3D animation and uh, interior design. And he wanted to try to to do. I mean, he was he will talk about it, but I'll just be short. So he wanted to try like to design a character in 3D. And we started with that first one, Twitch loadout. And uh, I knew Christina. She worked for. Uh, she's now working with Ubisoft in Ubisoft, but she worked for uh, uh, Take One back in the days. Take One is motion capture studio from from Serbia, who is mostly doing all the a lot of AAA stuff nowadays. And uh, she was helping us out to connect with them so we can do uh, uh, some really basic uh, motion capture. So we did that, we learned a ton. Then we started like creating this title sequence for ICC. And then we learned a ton. We, make, we made a ton of mistakes and like, I mean, it's pretty much just a couple of us. So uh, Sava was doing uh, all the animation and uh, direction. I was doing pretty much our direction and all the concepts. Uh, Mika has uh, had done um, has done or had done. Oh, my English sucks. Had done character uh, uh, character yeah. character design and uh, Yesh did the music and the sound. Uh, motion capture was done with uh, Christina's help and uh, Take One Studio and uh, Nenad Merzil. He also he also helped with the spaceship uh, production design. And that was pretty much it. So it just a couple of us was working on this. And uh, we did that like in between actual projects and stuff. So, I mean, you can see the quality is not that badass. I mean, there's a lot of people like, oh, you could do that and that. No shit, really. <laughs> we know, dude, we just don't have any money for this. We did, we're doing this for fun because we love that. And yeah. then Freight happened and Freight was also something similar. It, it's supposed to be something for NVIDIA, but it didn't happen. And we were already in a hype and we we're like, all right, let, let's just let's just do this so yeah we have a huge huge plans for future we won't talk about that now because it's super early but hopefully hopefully it will be something really really cool because we really love what we do and uh Sav is now working as a director in Axis animation yeah a very good animation studio from from glasgow and uh and he he really done uh He's really good with the with the with the direction, and uh, we're gonna do a lot of cool stuff in the future. Yeah, Sava is a great guy. I will bring him on stream so he can talk a little bit yeah, more definitely. about this. He he deserves all the attention, and uh, he will talk a lot. No worries about that. <laughs> we will get along good. We will get along good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sava. Hard battle. Yeah, hard battle. battle he's over. badass. He's badass now, he's and he's good. improving. He's improving a lot too, and he's like. He's animal man. He's learning every. I remember when we when we wanted to do freight, and he was like rendering previously in Octane, and he was like overnight switched to. Uh, I want to do. I don't know which was the render. V Ray, the new one, and tomorrow he he done like all the tech. He don't know how to use those software. And he was like learning it in like one day, and tomorrow he was like, oh no, Redshift, and he done that in Redshift, and he was like he's learning. I think he's now like into Blender and stuff like that, trying some new techniques mm. and stuff. So, yeah, he's really badass. Speaking about that, when will you join us in Blender, Milan? I tried it for two days. I unfortunately don't have time now. But also, I don't have a usage for Blender. I was playing around a little bit with the Octane and Cinema. My girlfriend, Lana, she was helping me around because she is badass in, in, in cinema render, in cinema generally. And she's doing like uh, 3D visualization and rendering in Arnold and I don't know, some other programs like uh corona and stuff like that not sure so she's pretty much badass in cinema and she was like no fool don't do it like that and she was like helping with all that like tricks you know i was like ah okay cool. so uh i don't have time for blender now because i don't need it actually but at some point if the projects uh if the project is something that where where i can use 3d blender to help me with whatever that is, I will definitely just jump in and, and learn it. Because I also learn how to how to learn software pretty much fast. So I don't need more than like five to seven days mm. to 
because I know what I want. That's really important. Not just do, I'm going to learn software and what that means, just going there and see stuff. No, I know I kind of have a goal. So I want to design something, whatever. And then I and then I really know kind of, I'm more focused at that point. So I know what tools I need so I can so I can um, show what I want to design. Yeah. By the but way, I don't know. I'll, I'll jump. I'll, I join you guys in the future. Not now. I really don't have time. We are, we are expecting you because Blender came out uh, the official version yesterday. Really? Uh, yeah, the official version is finally out. Cool. Because cool. I, I tried that the new one like that was, I think, beta like 2.8 yeah. with that TV render and it's badass because I didn't like the previous one. Because of the UI and everything was so confusing, and I, I'm really visual guy. So if UI sucks, I'm just not gonna. You you can't you can't sell me that shit. Yeah, and what what I like when we spoke about uh, the, your personal project that we are now watching IFCC titles, and there are some other ones that I will show. But what I like is that all of this was done on zero dollars, and it was all oh, yeah. your passion and. You showed to the people that you can do something amazing because I'm always uh, talking with designers and uh, artists and everybody's always complaining uh, there is no money or there is no this, there is no that. You literally showed to everybody that you can do high quality work that uh, is going to be on an AAA level and that everybody's going to enjoy with zero, zero dollars. So what I want to ask you now is how did you do that? Because the main question is... Uh, how did you achieve to do that and what made you do it? Because other passion. artists stop passion. But just passion. Because we're not in this industry because of money or just work or whatever. It just happened by accident that you can earn from what you love. So it's kind of cool match. But we're we're in this because we all love this. And that's it. So we didn't we didn't go for money. We're like, we're kind of working to get money so that we can wear our personal stuff. That's that's our mindset behind behind all this. And uh, yeah, we didn't have any budget, not even for freight. And uh, we kind of pull it together anyways, because we're we're passionate. And thankfully, nowadays, we have a lot of friends in the industries so who can just jump in because there's a lot of like people who also have a passion for what they what they do. And they're really willing to to help us out. So thanks, people. And uh, you don't need money. I mean, you need money if you want to develop that, like to be very huge or to be really badass quality. But to do something on this level, you just, I mean, you need to have a skill, passion, and to sacrifice your ass a lot. Yeah. Because it's super easy to just quit, to be like, oh, this is hard. I can't do it. Or I have idea because, dude, I have a million of ideas. But when you have to realize them, you just you just go for a beer because it's easier, right? Mm. And 99% of people will do that. And it's really kind of hard. I mean, that's the reason why I kind of love Sava because he's like, we all want to do that. And he's like, we're starting. And we were like, yeah, but we have like, he was like, all right, tomorrow we have to do that. I'm like, fuck it. All right, let's do it. And we yeah. just all start together and be like, so we're kind of... So when he was done, we were jumping in and be like, yeah, all right, you can, because he had a lot of pressure doing that because he had to handle all the all the files together to make all that work and to do all the post-production stuff and things like that. So yeah, we're helping each other. We we appreciate each other as a friends and as an artist and, um, and just passion, that's it. Do what you love. If you really love, it's gonna show. You can say, I love that, but I don't have time for that. Well, I mean, it might happen, but also, if you really want to do something, you're going to do it anyways. Yeah. Speaking about love, every time I hear somebody say love, the first thing that falls on my mind is Steve Jobs when he said that you have to love something that you do because when the hard times come, it's the only thing that will keep you doing that. Well, that's true. But also uh, <laughs> what's going to happen is uh, there will be a lot of job that you won't love because you love what you do because because of something and there will be like a lot of time where the clients will come with their own idea and you have a lot of pressure to do something that you don't love but it's still a job so you have to pull it out so that's that's the that's the moment when you need to have certain skills so you can pull it out mm. but also yeah it's easier when you love it because you have that skill developed because you love that and if you didn't love that, you couldn't do this. So when people are trying, because I have a lot of friends who are artists and they want to kind of do that digital drawing, whatever, because they call it that digital thing, you know, in computer. <laughs> and 
because they what happened they heard there is money in it and that's the only reason why they want to mm, do that yeah and i'm like you if you're doing if you previously done some really abstract stuff like you know throwing painting on the wall and now you want to do like badass concept art for industry you can do that because they actually didn't force themselves to learn it was like i'm artist color well mm. that's not the case here they have to struggle a lot a lot to learn a lot of stuff that you don't love and it's boring but you have to learn them because they will help you. They will eventually lead you to, to to that to that at to that point when you can show what you have, like what's your idea. But you need to have certain skills so you can show that. It's not like I have an idea, bam, here it is. Well, yeah. that's the struggle. Every one of us have the idea, but it's really it's really hard to show what you have. I said, yeah. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> I don't know, it happened five <laughs> minutes ago and I so enjoyed so much what you were talking about that I forgot. <laughs> so yeah, well, well, yeah, I wanted want to talk about that. So people who are trying to get into this, uh, it's they have to love this. They can't just jump in and be like, I want to do that digitally. Yeah. Because it's cool, because there are money in there, in that, so it's not how it works. So it's really not how it works. So that is the advice you would like to give to the per people who oh, love yeah. them? Oh yeah. Is there oh, any, yeah, other, because any other this advice? Is, this is a very unique type of job, so you really have to love it. I don't know, just be, be ready to sacrifice yourself a lot. So, I mean, you hear that from every artist who is kind of successful. You have to sacrifice your ass mm. a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean really a lot. You have to suffer a lot, man. At some certain point, you will be happy and everything will be cool. But that like beginning phase, like a couple of years, it will be fucking hell. I mean, at the same time, it will be super cool. You'll be overhyped because it's super cool what you're doing and especially if you love that because you're learning and that's kind of very very interesting adventure going through all that and kind of every time you kind of learn something and then you oh i'm gonna do another work because i now know how to do that so it's cool but also you will have a ton of burnouts a ton of struggles and <laughs> depressions and stuff because you're like 16 hours doing your computer drawing painting yeah. exploring learning your head just want to blow at some moment i have from time to time my breaks from four months just four months i'm like doing nothing because I'm overburned and I can't do shit. Literally, I can't do nothing. It's blank. I, I have a feel at that moment when I when I take a look at my works, I'm like, I didn't do this. I, I don't know. How, no, really, I don't know how to do this. I, I have no idea how I did this because yeah. I'm so burned out. And then when when that when that pass and you're kind of you're there again and you're starting to go. So it's cool. So life work balance. Let's talk about that when we started. How do you balance it, man? I'm done. I'm done. Let's go. I'm also leaving. It's time to okay. quit my interview. We are leaving. Let's grab a drink, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's the hardest part. Everybody's talking about that. And at the beginning, I was like, why everybody's talking about that? It's easy. You just work eight hours. You learn that. You have organization. On Monday, you learn that. On Tuesday, you learn that. So it's easy. Uh, for the weekend you do that and uh how -huh. okay so once you learn that then you can it's nothing like that mm. well, literally even you I'm trying hard to have organize to organize myself but guess what there is one small thing that that is happening every day like when you're working and that's a life <laughs> and that's life and just like kick you here and there like just throwing you away and it, it's really hard yeah I mean it's hard to 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 be continuous with all that, especially I'm I'm living alone, so I have to handle a ton of things. So sometimes I'm super tired, man, of, of some really basic stuff that I have to do, like in home or whatever. It's really it's really hard. Sometimes you're super cool, you're, you have all you have everything under your control, so everything is going pretty much smooth. But sometimes it's just complete mess, and you really just need to look at the sky and be like, oh, deep breath, deep breath. So it's, it's hard. I mean, you can do that. You have it's really important thing. Organization is like half half a job. So if you know how to organize yourself, you can you can you can be mass you can be messy arti artist in, in these industries because you will suffer so hard. Mm. I mean, that's from my experience. I tried both. I tried not to take care about stuff and be like, oh, go with the flow. That's cool. Oh well, you can't go with the flow, or you're just gonna fail with the flow for sure. Because if you go with the flow, the client's gonna go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be like that. That was a good one. The client's just gonna go. Yeah, the client's gonna go if you're not doing everything. Also, uh, 
for me, for example, yeah, the organization is very important, but uh, it's you have to do it on a daily basis. And sometimes, as you said, yeah. it's very tiring when you have life beside it and everything. <laughs> yeah. If you are doing only art, I mean, okay, it's amazing, but that's a one-way ticket to but depression. because That's not real to do only art. I yeah, mean, yeah. We're all grown men, so we have to take care of a lot of stuff in our lives. So it's not just art. I remember AJ once said, like, life, uh, art is easy, life is hard. I was like, what? I don't get it. <laughs> well, now I get it. <laughs> so that that's that's true what you said like it's, it's it's really hard to balance all that but you have to balance and that's like I believe that uh, over time you would just learn how to how to control all that how to balance those two and it will be easier or, or at least you you just don't have to to overthink about all that and you have less stress and that's it do you yeah. have any question maybe in stream because I'm not watching the the, the chat for, for now, we don't have questions, but we have a lot of people watching, and I think they're really enjoying what you're saying. I, yeah. I, Thanks, so guys, guys. guys, if uh, if you have any questions, feel free because feel free to ask them because we are finishing in 15 minutes, and uh, ask the master so he can answer stuff. We're having him on the stream. We're having him <laughs> well, on the stream. I wish that I'm a master man. I'm just not. The more I'm working, actually. I'm less confident and that's really funny because I just re I'm realizing from day to day that I don't know that and I don't know that and I have to learn that. Oh, that will take a lot of time on that. And I'm trying every day to learn new stuff and the more you learn, the more you realize how bad you are actually. At the beginning, I was super confident. When you learn two things and you're kind of improving so fast and everything is fresh and you kind of, I'm evolving, that's it, I'm badass. And all this, and you're just realizing, dude, I have no idea. There's a ton of stuff. I will need like 20 years to be where I want to be. And then I will probably have to learn for, I mean, until I don't die, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not master at all. <laughs> That's the point. So, master, where, master Milan, it sounds like uh, like you're Yoda and I'm, I'm your apprentice. Uh, master Milan, where will we see Jesus. you this year? On which events will we see you? Uh, I will be on THU with uh, my guys from Mastra, so there will be uh, Hunter, Urosh and Christina will be there too. Oh, nice. So we'll, we'll be there, we'll hang out with people, I mean, we've never been on THU, so we're super happy and hyped about all that. Uh, we missed IFCC this year because we had a lot of other stuff happening. And we'll see, I don't know, after that, I think Sala mentioned me that there will be like playground, it's happening in Berlin. Yeah. So we're probably going to go for that one too. So yeah, if, if you guys around, we can catch up out there. Having a beer, don't draw. <laughs> Perfect, then we're going to go together on both both places. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, you're, that you're, would be great, actually. Do you know who else is coming from, from Serbia? Absolutely, is. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I know for him, for sure. I know for him, for sure. That will be that. I'm, 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 I'm waiting for that one. For now that we know who's going to be on THU, it's uh, Darko Stojanovic, uh, mm -hmm. you, uh, whole master team, four of you. Iz is also coming. I'm coming. Sava Živković is maybe coming. And that's it pretty much that we know. I'm also trying to uh, push some other people to come, but it's still not known. More than enough to ruin Malta. More than enough that they will remember us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was a great time, I guess. It was, I mean, I remember IFCC was a blast, like, every time. It was super cool. Like, yeah. I really loved those events, man, because you you, man, you you met all your heroes and a lot of people that you didn't know that they exist, and it turned out, turns out that they're super cool, and you kind of really love those. You, and you pretty much share with all them the same stories and, like, life, because you're doing similar stuff, which means that you have similar taste and a lot of similar stuff happening to you during the day because you're doing the same thing so they're str they're going through the same struggle as you are so it's cool we have a question and shodan i hope i'm pronouncing it good the question is what is the best way to start freelancing well <clears throat> i don't know i don't know really how to start nowadays because there's a lot i think why freelance i mean i maybe you should be smarter than to go in some in-house first to look for some in-house job, maybe some mobile game, not something AAA, because you probably, if you're starting, you can't even jump in, in a AAA, but uh, something easier when you can learn from your colleagues, you'll probably do their, like, uh, painting rocks in the background or something like that, but it doesn't matter because you will pick up a lot of tricks. 
just get a lot of tutorials. There are plenty of them now, nowadays, so you can learn a lot of tips, tips and tricks, like first how to do job, and then where and how to look for our clients. Because then you will start to hang out with artists who are older in the industry, and they can like help you with finding the jobs, your clients, stuff like that. I mean, pretty much, um, I'm getting all the jobs in our station. I still never looked for a job. They're just like hitting me up on our station. That's how I got all my clients so far. So, I mean, there's Upwork. It's really for a kind of basic beginning. I remember I started on Elance with Whale Shark Studio because they were they were like uh, in a top three in design and multimedia on Elance. That was like previous Upwork. That's how I started, like when it like six years ago when I actually started, and my first job happened there. So. Going from there, I actually work work a lot out there, and I learn a ton because you, you have a ton of different projects where whew, a lot of stuff will happen, and then you learn how to handle the clients and what to do, what not to do. You fail a lot, you learn on that, and you lose a lot and stuff. So there, there's a lot of way, really. You just first need to practice your skills, and then the job will come. It will just happen. Trust me. Yeah. If you're good, if you're good. I, I completely agree on that because the, when the quality gets high, you can yeah. get an artist. You can literally, you just start popping up everywhere. That's true. Also, personal projects. What do you think about that? Can can they bring you work? Oh yeah, because uh, in personal projects, you actually really expose yourself and you show through you and what you really love. I mean, depends on what what what's the project, but uh, that's something that and. What I suggest is for personal project, do something that you want that you won't get from a client because uh, clients are clients. They have like their IPs or whatever. So you're pretty much paid to do what they what they need. But when you do personal projects, you can do a lot of stuff that you don't have to like uh, to you're not paid for that. So you can do whatever you love. It can be completely abstract from, I don't know, some mass organic stuff to something super hardcore uh, hard surface like max and stuff like that but do what you really love to do and don't you shouldn't care about what people what people think now, of course you have to balance you have to do some personal stuff who, who will help you to to nail down jobs and to to attract clients because you can't do just a lot of abstract things but i highly recommend to to try something that uh some personal stuff that are really not influenced by by industries or or any commercial stuff because that's actually when you're gonna see who you are as an artist and what you really love and try to do that. So who knows? Maybe maybe people will love that. I mean, I started like that and turn out people love it. So yeah, yeah, that's that's one very important lesson. I mean, uh, a lot of people try when, when there is no work, they start scattering all around. And for me also, what you're saying is very important to do what you love and what drives you actually, not a lot you like, what drives yeah. you because the what quality will you. come out, it will come out and uh, I think quality well, will come over time just with practicing, but what drives you is really important. That's when you show like who you are and what's your design sensibilities, sensibilities and all that, like just do what you love, man. It's hard, but that's how it is. You don't have to, you can always go in house and do what someone else else asks you to do. And, it will be easy, right? But if you are not that ambitious, you can go with that. If you really want to push yourself, if you really want to push yourself, it's hard, like warning, but uh, you can, you can, you can do everything. You really literally can do everything. You just have to work fucking hard. Yeah. Work hard until you die. That's the only way to go in art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Work, work hard and we can grab a drink and that's it pretty much. <laughs> that's it, right? That's our life, to be honest. <laughs> Pretty much it looks like that so far. I'm curious how it's going to end it. Hopefully not soon mm -hmm. and not to this place. Who I, knows? I, I, okay. I'm sure it's not going to end soon. So I, it hope, will be great, I hope, I hope, I <laughs> hope. It, it, will, it will be cool. It will be cool. I mean, it's really good to mingle around with other people who are doing some some regular jobs and see what they're doing. And then you realize how fucking happy we are. Like they're doing really awful jobs, like eight, nine, ten hours a day, every fucking day, and they don't love it. And the salary is shit. Mm -hmm. And then we then we complain as an artist, like we're just super lazy, dude. We should be really happy what we do. Yeah, that that is completely true. 
And I, I want to ask one more question because yep. I, I, I did I jump over it and I would like to return it for the end. Go ahead. You, you said you studied graphic design. Yeah. And I want to know how did that transition go to concept art? It don't. It, it didn't. It didn't. <laughs> it didn't. Uh, but um, it may be, I maybe developed some, some sensibility of putting shapes by each other, but uh, regard to designing something as a shape, I mean, it, it didn't come up from that background because you were learning. I mean, graphic design is pretty much like typography, like moving that up and there, here and there. It's really simple shapes like circles, squares, stuff like that, colors. That's pretty much it. What you were doing, like in graphic design. I mean, that was like that basic level when I, where where I was on university. So everybody thinks like if you're fin if you if you if you study graphic design, you will be a better designer in this industry. I, I think it doesn't matter because I was better in uh, in painting, I guess. So yeah, I can see sense. that on your work. I can see because I can see your moves. But I didn't love the painting at all. I remember when really? I was when I was in a in a school when I was small. My mother has has doing all the work for me, and he was yelling at me constantly. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't love to. I just didn't want to draw and paint. It was like ah. Oh. I mean, I loved it, but I was like more in that in that overhyped kid that was just jumping and running around, and I couldn't just sit there and be like ah. Oh, I'm into this. I'm like. Mm. So I, I couldn't do that. But later on, uh, on university, uh, I was second year when we had a painting for the, for the first time. And I didn't love it at all. Uh, I really, I actually hated it because I didn't want to paint. I was like, I'm a graphic designer. And then when I was third year, I just started to paint. And I was like, fuck it, I really enjoy this. I love it. And then I started to paint. Yeah. But it was all traditional and it was just a little, it was really little, but I, I love it. Yeah. And that's how all starts. I always thought you you were a painter when I saw your work because there is that moves brush moves that I can never do and yeah now when you tell me this yeah I think you can learn anything from this uh, when you tell me like a uh, person can learn anything right it can I mean it can now that that all really depends on your sensibility so I didn't kind of practice those brush strokes it was just going by nature because you pull that and you love what you see and that's it. And that's what I'm talking. It's not, it's not talent, it's taste. So what you love, yeah, that's it. That's when you stop and that's how you do what you, that's how your design come out because you love that. And that's why it looks like that. I mean, it's hard and simple to explain at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it is, it is true. So we are finishing, man. Cool. It, the time has passed. Uh, I really enjoyed this stream. We touch a lot of stuff. You, me too. You, I think that people can learn a lot from you in the, on this episode because you touch many main subjects that uh, younger younger generations or the new designers in general want to hear about, and it's gonna be a huge knowledge for them on the internet. That will be cool if they can. I mean, hit me up, guys, if you need any questions. If I will answer you every, anytime, I guess. You shouldn't have said that. Now you will have 500 no, messages. No, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing that a lot. I'm answering a lot of questions like when I have time. So of course, I really love that because I, I know how important it is to to like uh, to get answer from people that you really appreciate. Yeah. It's really important. Now, just, you know, it was hard when, when we started. So that's why I probably appreciate that. Mm, you're, you remember the hard times. Same as, oh, yeah. same oh, yeah. as me when nobody wants to answer you like goodbye. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's good that the new times came. And I appreciate you helping out people. Yeah, man. Well, every time. So, yeah, guys, that was episode 15 Creature Design with amazing Milan Nikolic. I posted his links. I posted his links. Uh, go and check his work. Uh, his work is very unique and I think he can inspire you also in this interview. Hit the subscribe button and soon we will have new guests which you're gonna enjoy. Have a great day Milan, thank you for coming. Thank, thank you Darko, thank you and all this. It was it was really cool and I'm glad that I was part of your stream and hopefully it will it will grow so huge in the future and oh, I'll be proud you. one day like, oh, oh, I know Darko man, I know Darko, ah, he's my buddy. Yeah, I'm your <laughs> buddy, you're my buddy, I'm your buddy and I'll yeah, see but, you tonight on a drink. <laughs> Yeah, dude, but you're you're also doing an amazing job. I mean, when you started, I was like, "What the is he doing?" And now, now you're kind of you're on the right path. So just just keep it up, man. 
Thanks, man. Thank you so much. So, guys, have a great evening or a great day. I don't know what time is at your place. And Milan, I will see you in 15 minutes on a drink. Yeah, yeah, because I know what's time in Serbia. It's beer time, man. It's, Friday. it's Saturday night. All right, let's catch up in a see you in 15, 15 minutes man. for a drink. All right. Thanks, Bye. guys, for joining. And thank you, Dark, for inviting me once again. Thank you for coming. See you around, guys. See ya. Bye.